2023. Before we begin, I would like to inform members of the public uh, who may be viewing the meeting on the district's YouTube page that in order to make a public comment during the meeting, you must connect to the meeting using the Zoom link provided on the agenda. You must also register with the clerk by sending an email to clerk at nctd.org with the name and or phone number and which item you would like to speak on. I will ask Sugil Rodriguez, clerk of the board, to call the roll. Committee Chair Contreras. Present. Committee Vice Chair Hinsey. Here. Committee Member White. Present. Committee Member Desmond. That completes the roll. Thank you so much. And uh, Sukhil will now provide a safety brief and review evacuation procedures. In case of an emergency, I will dial 911. In case of an evacuation, please take the stairs. Do not use the elevators. One clear, once cleared of the building, do not re-enter unless cleared to do so by emergency personnel. There are fire extinguishers and first aid kits on each floor of the building. There is a portable defibrillator on the first floor and staff on hand trained on CPR procedures if needed. This concludes my safety brief. Thank you for that. And uh, Suhil, do we have any public comments today? No, Madam Chair. All right. So since we have no public comments, at this time we are ending the public registration for general public comment. Now, before we get into specific items on the agenda for this meeting, I would like to outline meeting protocols to make sure this meeting is as efficient as possible. First, please hold your comments and or questions until after the agenda item is presented. Second, when the time comes for board member comments or questions, please raise your hand and I will call on you in the order received. So we're going to move to our first item on the agenda, which is a summary of the trends and observations from feedback received from customers to date for fiscal year 2023. Chris Orlando, Chief Planning and Communications Officer, will introduce this item. Chris, you have our attention. Thank you, Chair. Um, so with me today is Alicia Pete Watson, our Director of Customer Service. So uh, I'll do introduce the item and then Alicia is going to walk through the results for, for the committee. First slide, please. Uh, so for the committee, just as a refresher, um, here are all the things that our customer service department does. Um, they are uh, the folks who um, work on the customer service counters at the transit centers, answer the call centers, uh, phone calls that come into the call centers. Um, they also do a variety of things from trip planning to ADA work um, to assisting with reduced fare applications um, to helping during um, during service disruptions and other things. So very active department. Um, they do many things uh, to help NCTD in its mission. Uh, next slide, please. Um, one of the major areas for the group is taking customer feedback and tracking and resolving that feedback. So what you'll see today is um, the year-to-date summary. So through uh, the third quarter of that feedback um, from our customers. Um, <clears throat> this feedback uh, comes in through our call centers or through our email uh, or uh, through the website. And it's tracked through our CRM or our customer response management system. Um, uh, in that system, every single uh, concern that comes into the district is tracked. Um, when a concern comes in, it is um, uh, sent out to the subject matter expert for research and resolution. And so we, we track um, the time from when the concern is entered all the way through the resolution and communication back to the customer uh, of, that, uh, of that concern. Uh, and then the customer service department manages that response. So they're the, they're the ones who will communicate back to the customer um, about the concern and, and give what the resolution was. Um, the group also manages our mystery writer program. Uh, and so this is a program through which we have um, uh, a vendor that rides uh, our program, uh, our, our modes as a mystery writer and has a, um, a specific uh, scorecard that they use when they ride to rate in certain areas. So you'll see the results of those rides today. Um, and and um, that uh, mystery rider program includes a certain number of rides on each of the major modes uh, each quarter. Uh, and so we take that, that re uh, those results and use that as another way to improve service. Um, all of this is tracked by, uh, all this data is tracked by mode and by comment type. 
Um, and um, uh, we report to the board quarterly. You'll see those reports um, once a quarter come through uh, with the, on the consent agenda um, with this data. Um, so it's similar to what you, you've seen before. Um, and then we also do um, monthly meetings with each of the modes. So Alicia and I um, uh, meet each month with, with each of the modes and walk through the specific concerns for, for their mode for that month. Um, and we get down to the specific, <laughs> when I say specific concern, I mean specific concern. So we'll look at trends, but we'll also look at the specific concern and, and resolution. So we get pretty detailed in those meetings. Uh, and then, as I said, we do the quarterly board reports for, for the board itself, just so you, you can see the trends and you can see what we're hearing back from our customers. Um, so with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Alicia to walk through uh, some of the recent results from the third quarter. Hello. All right. Uh, this first slide is the uh, overall um, complaints received for the third quarter. This is um, comprehensive of all of our modes and also uh, feedback that we've received that are not specific to modes. So this includes um, uh, facilities related, uh, customer service or um, security and safety related as well. So we received 505 complaint cases in the third quarter, which was a reduction to the previous quarter of 52. Um, those were specific reductions in um, operator and service related feedback. And in the um, next slide, which you'll see, not, not now, but uh, that was due to reductions out of breeze, which is uh, next slide. So yeah, of course, For, by mode or for us, for overall. overall? Yeah. yeah. So um, we, you, uh, we don't have this slide in here, huh? Um, it's about, let's see, uh, last quarter was about 505. We've been trending in that for the last year. So in and around that number. Um, the last time we saw uh, less than that was in Q3 of uh, FY22. So for the last four quarters, we've been about 500. So if you go back to the previous slide, um, one of the things we, we changed recently, you would have noticed this in your Q2 report, is that we're now, um, uh, we previously we compared year over year, meaning we compare um, Q3 of 2023 with Q3 of 2022. Uh, and we found that that wasn't a great way to look at it, that that customer concerns tend to trend. And so we've changed the way we look at it. And now we look at a rolling five quarter look so that we can identify where we're, where we're trending. It's not a um, complaints aren't a seasonal thing. They're sort of an ongoing thing. And so so we're now looking at it in the view you see here where, where we're um, uh, not comparing to the prior fiscal year necessarily, but we're tracking it over um, a quarterly basis over the last five quarters. Okay, um, so the overall system-wide uh, reduction is specific to um, service and operator-related reports. Uh, we also saw decreases in uh, security-related feedback and also graffiti uh, feedback. Uh, we did see a slight increase in safety feedback as well as equipment-related concerns specific to rail. Next slide. Overall, um, the complaints per 100,000 trips are, remain relatively the same over the rolling quarters. So there's not a significant change um, when compared to ridership. Can we pause on that one? Go back as well. So um, just one uh, note about this. Look, so we do this. Um, per 1,000 trips so that it controls for ridership. So as our ridership fluctuates or change or seasonality, this, this look gives you um, that, that cleaner look where if we flex in ridership, we may see more complaints because we have more folks on the system. So this, this particular look lets you sort of control for, for if ridership is up or down in that particular time. Frame. All right, so Breeze in the third quarter saw a reduction um, when compared to the previous quarter. This was specific to fewer complaints received um, due to service-related feedback and operator-related feedback. 
They received overall 260 complaints in the third quarter. Um, it was a decrease of 38 complaints when compared to Q2. Uh, and again, downward trend is service related. So that would be service late, service early, service passed by. There's a series of subcodes. Is is the blue that's the 56%, is that security or service related? Service okay. related, yes. Um, I don't believe uh, that security is reflected. We don't have feedback in uh, okay. for this. That small sliver of 1% is actually equipment related. Ah. Oh, yes. Okay. Um, and then the 2% is safety concerns. 3% is the claims and accidents. So 38% is operator related, 56% service related feedback. And, uh, this is a good sign, slight decrease, um, a drop from uh, 26.7 down to 24.7 in this quarter, um, getting back down to where we were last year. So making progress. Lift. So Lyft has remained relatively consistent over the past couple of quarters. Um, we did see um, fewer service-related complaints uh, in Q3 uh, when compared to the previous. Um, however, operator-related complaints have increased to their highest uh, level this year when we look over the five months of the rolling quarter. Um, operator-related complaints were specific to um, either root, operator root, or um, they also have reservation as in dispatch. Um, they're more behavior based. Quick question. Yeah. Um, so that's 106 complaints out of the, what was it, 505 total? Mm -hmm. So I'm just curious because looking at, um, it's what, like roughly like 20% of the complaints are lift, but that doesn't represent the, like 20% of our customers aren't using Lyft. Right. So Lyft has a higher uh, percentage of complaints compared to ridership. Uh, and it seems like that, this seems like a consistent trend. Um, is that right? That this is pretty consistent? It's fair. Yeah. When we look at the rolling five, I mean, you can see here, it's, it's, fairly consistent with the amount. It's just really the subcode that changes. Um, you can see service related had been an issue in Q4. Um, there was work done to bring that down. Um, we didn't see a huge uptick in operator related this past quarter. Um, it was specific to reservationist and dispatch. There's been work since then. So we anticipate that to be um, decreased for Q4's reporting. But overall, the number of complaints coming in is roughly the same. As the... And what percentage, I know it can change, but like approximately what percentage of our ridership for the total system uh, does Lyft represent? I wish I had planning. Um, yeah, um, we can get the number for you. But, okay. but to your point, it is, it is a, uh, on a, Per percentage basis, yes, it is higher. Yeah, on a, a customer per customer basis, yeah. yeah, it seems that folks that are writing Lyft are having a lot more issues. Um, or so yeah, or, and these are folks that you know, mostly this is paratransit, right? This is paratransit. So I just, um, I'm glad that we're working on trying to reduce some of this um, service related issue. Uh, but, you know, it really can't come soon enough because that's for 20% of our complaints to be from such a small percentage of our overall ridership. Uh, it's, it, it really is a big problem. So I appreciate you saying that there's things that are changing with dispatch and whatnot to help. Um, so that, that's my only question. I just had to stop you right there, but thank you. I've got one. Real quick, just curious for uh, the third quarter of 22, there's, uh, I guess, more claims and accidents than the rest of the uh, quarters. Did something specific happen there? So a claim and accident could range anywhere from, um, you know, uh, the door was accidentally shut on me to I was um, alighting off the bus, misstepped and tripped. Okay. Um, 
it could whether or not those are actual valid claims is not reflective in here. Got it. Um, it's just merely a reporting box that we wanted to include that it's a it's a subcode of data. Understood. Yeah, and, and I think Alicia raised an important point. <clears throat> the data you're seeing reflects <clears throat> uh, every time custom, a customer um, uh, submits a concern, um, we then research and, and get to the root cause of that concern. And, and there may be a determination of, of validity, non-validity, but for our purposes and for customer service purposes, anytime a customer concern is expressed, we track it and we understand it, whether or not we prove it out to be valid or not, because from our view and, and our approach from customer services, if the customer had that perceived issue, then it's a real issue whether or not, you know, the thing happened in the way that was described. So that's, so what you see are all the results that customers have submitted, if, if that makes sense. So that, um, yeah. So 106 uh, complaints, and I should also say, um, Back to that 505 number, 414 of those are specific to modes. So um, so it's really 106 of these complaints to the 414, which are modal based, um, which I don't have a calculator, so I could present out. But um, so it's an increase of three when you compare to the previous quarter. Um, it's a slight decrease. This was operator related feedback. So uh, bulk of the feedback that we are receiving in complaints, 55% uh, of it is operator related. 40% of it is service related. 2% is equipment related. 2% is safety and 1% is claims and accidents. Um, we are encouraged though in seeing a downward trend specific to service related. And as I mentioned previously, we're, we're anticipating to see the operator related go down for Q4 results. So again, um, as Chris had mentioned, uh, we do uh, look at this when compared to ridership. So um, we are down to 4.3 from uh, where we were this time last year at 7.4. So this is trending in the right direction. Um, next slide. Coaster. Uh, coaster overall complaints has decreased slightly during Q3 when compared to Q2. Um, we did see equipment related complaints increase um, slightly in this quarter. Um, the bulk of the complaints were actually equipment related. Next slide. So 59% of the complaints received on Coaster were equipment related, 23% were operator related, 12% are service related, 6% were due to claims and accidents. Quick question. So yeah. equipment related, could that, does that also um, encompass like air conditioning? Yes. Air conditioning. <laughs> um, that's the problem I've had. Doors, uh, <laughs> doors not opening. Um uh, issues with restrooms. Okay. Yes. HVAC issues would be one of those. Okay. Yep. And, and part of, part of what you're seeing here is, is air conditioning. Concerns. Okay. Yep. I'd say majority are air conditioning indoors. Uh, next slide. <laughs> no, <laughs> they're not. Um, so when compared and adjusted for ridership, um, they they we did see a slight decrease in Q3 from the previous quarter to 10.8 down from 11.3, um, almost down to where we were about a year ago. Next slide. Sprinter. So sprinter complaints have uh, steadily increased over the past year. When we take a look at our rolling five quarters. Um, the increase is particularly um, pronounced at the beginning of FY23. Um, and we'll go into the next slide and you can see where those are being driven. So um, Sprinter received 27 complaints in the third quarter of FY23. Um, it's roughly the same amount when compared to the previous quarter. Um, while the numbers stayed the same, we did see an in in increase in service-related um, and equipment-related feedback. 
this is primarily driven by mechanical issues. Um, service related is high because um, we're having to cancel uh, trips or trips are delayed um, due to the mechanical issues that we're experiencing on Sprinter. So 63% of the feedback received was service related. 7% um, was graffiti on the actual modes. 4% were safety related, 19% is equipment related, and 7% was operator related. So there's a there's a much bigger percentage for graffiti um, on the Sprinter. So are we talking about graffiti on the train itself? Correct. Okay. Because yes. I know there's a lot of graffiti on the outside. On the right of way. That's different. This is actually okay. on the mode. So either somewhere inside the vehicle or on the exterior of the vehicle. Okay. And then um, when we have fires, is that part of the service related? Because there has to be a cancellation. It would attribute to these numbers. Um, we've been fortunate um, this last for there were a few, but um, yes, that would come into play in this. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. And next slide. Um, when adjusted uh, for ridership, um, we can see that we are sitting at 9.6 complaints per 100,000 trips taken. Uh, this was a fairly significant increase from where we were a year ago um, in Q3 FY22. Next. Let me uh, go back. Yes, yeah, so the, that uh, increase you're seeing is is primarily driven by the mechanical issues that Alicia referenced, and so that is being actively worked on, and um, a, a lot of attention internally and within the train operations group around solving some of the mechanical challenges that have mechanical challenges that lead to service cancellations that are resulting in these concerns. So um, it's it's a big step up. We we always as we've watched this. Sprinter used to be the quiet. We, we, we got very few concerns around Sprinter, um, but with the uptick in mechanical, we've seen more. And so it is something that is being actively worked on. Yes. I mean, that's one of the drivers for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Next slide. Okay. Compliments. So this is a great slide. <laughs> um, <laughs> We received 30 compliments in Q3, which was an increase to the previous quarter. And it is um, our most, it's the highest we've received all year. Um, so uh, NCTD, the green box that uh, correlates to customer service um, along with uh, facilities or some uh, other departments within the district. Uh, yellow is for coaster, lift, um, and then breeze, which receives um, the most typically. Next slide. All right, so Mystery Ride, as Chris mentioned, we do uh, partner with our third party contract. They are called A Customer's Point of View um, and they are outriding our modes quarterly. Uh, we are just about to finish up our Q4 rides, which is exciting. Um, overall, we have a, a goal of 95% or higher, um, which is what we're aiming for. You'll see that that is the um, yellow kind of ticked line at the 95%. And you can see by mode where uh, they fell out. So Sprinter is at 93.27. Um, Breeze finished at 92.66 and Coaster at 91.21. Uh, by mode, so Breeze, again, uh, you've got uh, a couple categories which we are asking questions underneath each of those categories. The top portion of the slide um, we have operator conduct, uh, which there are serious questions under that that the mystery writer is looking to answer. We have ride information, um, ADA compliance, uh, and equipment and vehicle questions uh, that generate an overall score. So um, I'll just step in on this. So, so these, these reports are actually really, really good. <laughs> um, so this is a, a uh, you know, contractor that rides the mode and fills out a report. And when we get this report back, we actually get the full report with the write-up, including um, photos. And so if they say bathroom was dirty, they will take a picture of the dirty bathroom and it would be included in the report. So these are, are extremely helpful when we walk through with the operational teams. If, if something's identified in, in these reports, we have the ability to really drill down and say, here was what it was. Uh, and we use that with operations teams to say, you know, how do we get fixed to, to whatever the matter might be. So these are a really helpful tool for us. 
And on the flip side of that, uh, they're a great tool to celebrate when we get hundreds, especially on bus and on some modes. Those that's a it's a great way to celebrate where someone's seen improvement. So um, inching closer on breeds, which is very exciting. You can see. I just want to highlight this particular mode because it is the bulk of our ridership. Um, we started off in Q3 FY22 at 85.2, um, and uh, at our low point, we were at 83, and we are now um, up to 92.7. So we are we're making we're making progress. Poster, poster um, received an overall score of 91.2. It's uh, relatively been the same. It did have a small peak in Q1 of FY23 at 94%. Um, we we have we are pretty clear on the buckets of where we can make improvements. As you can see, announcements at 82%. Um, we have opportunity with having automated announcements just like our sister modes on Breeze and Sprinter. Um, and then uh, rail station and ride information and rail ride. So all under 95, but, um, but making some steady progress on um, poster. <clears throat> Question on the announcements. Yeah. Is that uh, at the station or is that inside, inside the, uh, the okay. mode? So yeah, sometimes the speakers don't work. They're correct. a little garbled. Yes, it's, um, okay. it's old. <laughs> um, but we have opportunity to uh, procure an announcement system similar okay. to that that we have on Sprinter and on our Breeze buses that would announce stops. Okay. Because, yeah, you're, like a, another British voice. Mm -hmm. Well, Chris <laughs> has some great ideas about the voice of coaster announcement. Awesome. So working on that one. <laughs> good, good. Local celebrity. Next slide. Um, Sprinter. So uh, Sprinter overall score finished at 93.3. Um, rail station finished at 90.6. Ride information 100%. Announcements 93.5. Uh, and rail ride at 93.4. So um, as you can see at the beginning of last quarter, so Q3 FY22, uh, look back, we were actually achieving above 95% uh, of the goal. We were at 96 and we have um, slipped kind of progressively as the quarters have rolled on, which is uh, a direct correlation to what we're also seeing with customer feedback. Uh, before we move to questions, I wanted to, just to highlight a few things. Um, you can move to the slide. So, yeah. <laughs> Not on the slide. Um, so uh, uh, Alicia was promoted a director of uh, customer service earlier this year. And since that time, we've been working together to, to um, make some changes and to really focus on the things we need to do. So some of that we mentioned already in terms of the tracking the way, changing the way we track this data, um, the, the regular meetings with the operations teams we started this year. Uh, and that's been a really good thing to get some changes uh, implemented. Um, we also recognize that um, looking at uh, uh, the customer experience only through the lens of com complaints isn't really a comprehensive look at it. It, it certainly gives us one perspective, um, but we are working on uh, developing other measures of customer sentiment and how we're doing on the system. So um, we're piloting right now what we call a hot takes survey. So you'll see out on the modes. Um, just a real simple QR code with how was your ride today? Was it good, bad, good, uh, great, okay, or bad? Um, so that's, we're, we're hoping that can give us a little bit better of a snapshot. Um, we uh, are uh, restarting a program that we had prior to COVID, which was uh, an employee rider program where um, employees ride the modes and provide us with a survey as well. Um, we soft launched that earlier this year with what we're calling a rate your ride uh, program. Um, that program was sort of voluntary to this point, but uh, starting next month, we're going to make that mandatory where we have every employee uh, in the agency required to take four rides a year uh, on each mode, um, which will give us another another data point about, about service. Um, and then um, we are in the process of developing a procurement for a true customer sentiment measurement tool. So we could not just measure complaints, but measure really what, what the customer sentiment uh, uh, is on the system. And so um, uh, watch for that in the coming year. We'll, we'll have that procurement uh, before you um, uh, uh, this fiscal year. Uh, and the goal with that is to give us a more comprehensive look about how we're doing rather than just looking at it through the lens of complaints. Um, and then one other note I wanted to make 
I know we, we often talk about um, our frontline folks as the operators and the train attendants, but um, the folks in our customer service department are also really our frontline folks. These they they work at the windows, they take the calls, and so. Uh, I just really want to recognize the work that they do because they are the voice and the face of the organization. So we don't often associate them as frontline. We often think of the the bus operators, the train crews as frontline, but but we have a team in our customer service uh, office that that is truly frontline and and really you know works every day on trying to solve solve the issues for for customers. So I really want to just to give them a little bit of recognition in this this as well. But with that, we'll take questions. Awesome, thank you. I uh, really appreciate the uh, presentation and all the work that goes into making it better for our customers. Um, so Hill, do we have any public comments on this agenda? I no, no, Madam Chair. All right, so at this time we are ending the public registration to speak on the item. And are there any questions or comments from the committee members? Thank you. <clears throat> really good to hear the good news. Um, I just had a few questions. One is, What's the difference between safety and security? Could you describe that for us? I sure can. So um, safety issues typically evolve um, if someone is cut into the fencing of the right of way or uh, there's a trespassing sign that's been removed uh, along any of our modes. Um, safety are typically... Um, or we're missing a sign inside of a mode, uh, they really are specific to um, safety issues um, or a wheelchair wasn't tied down and it um, maybe caused, a, you know, a claim in an accident on a mode. Security related feedback is, um, you know, there was a man on, on the bus, a passenger on the bus, um, who was acting unruly and it made me and my child feel unsafe. Um, we would typically flag that as a security issue. Or, uh, you know, we've got loitering at a transit center, um, that would be considered security as well. So um, safety, we, we don't see a ton of them. If we do, they're pretty specific to right of way. Um, and also um, on lift, we'll see that a lot with wheelchair. Thank you. Yeah, that's helpful to know about. And I assume that when it's a facility related thing, you're communicating with the city or the jurisdiction that. Yep. What's nice is we have a ticketing system built into our CRM system. When that feedback comes in and it goes off for research, it creates an internal ticket system with facilities that then works uh, within our DSD department to get that um, fixed. And they'll partner with if it's in whatever city jurisdiction. So um, we also receive back feedback from the cities as well. Uh, well, they'll say there's graffiti on the right of way, or we noticed uh, there's a gate open that we don't think should be open. Uh, it's we'll create a case for that and send that off to the right of way maintenance of way department for them to research. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Um, another question we had was you said that employees are required to ride all the modes of um, travel four times, and I just wanted to clarify that they're also doing the paratransit. Um, we didn't include paratransit okay. in that. So it's well, just, that's a way that we can address some of the yeah. the chronic concerns that we have is that having some employee eyes on it might be helpful. Okay. Okay. We will look at that. And then um, just one last question about um, rate my ride. Is there an incentive for people to participate or we're just hoping that they will? Um, no, it's, it's, we, we're making it as part of uh, uh, the program here at NCTD. So it's not, not a formal incentive um, to do it. Um, um, we had this previously in, in place before COVID, uh, and we've actually made it a bit simpler because it was it, it, previously it was six rides and it was pretty prescriptive in terms of, of how, how we did it. Um, we're trying to make it uh, more accessible for employees. So the, uh, the survey we've put on our internal um, homepage, so that it's right there and easy to click on. Um, and, uh, you know, we're making it sort of uh, their choice when they ride a ride or what mode, um, just as long as they hit hit breeze printer and coaster once once throughout the year. Okay, thank you. The, uh, was it the customer service staff you were acknowledging? We appreciate them. Anybody who's worked customer service knows it can be, uh, there's good days and bad days, good hours and bad hours. So uh, we're thankful for their hard work and, and for the presentation. Thank you. 
Awesome. Thank you all so much. Um, I'm going to go ahead and go through some of my questions. I saw lost and found on there. Now I know earlier we had discontinued, I think the lost and found during COVID. No. Okay. It has been alive and well all the way through COVID. Um, lost and found. The only thing we did to, to stop taking during the pandemic were items lost out, not on the modes. So um, like at the stations, right? Sometimes at the stations or I ran into that issue. Yeah. I found someone's phone and I couldn't reach yeah, it. Yeah. The, if phone. they're not lost on a mode, uh, we, we were getting um, items turned in that were not necessarily lost the, on any of our vehicles. Um, and during the pandemic, we, we stopped doing that. Um, we have resumed it, but I think there's just a little bit of, uh, with the transition of facilities, it was primarily facilities that were bringing those items in. Um, it's also very difficult for us to track any kind of video or customer information when items are lost in the, in the actual uh, transit center. On modes, it's a lot easier to identify um, okay, this person said on this bus at this specific time, we can go review video footage um, and interview a bus operator. We have a little bit of a tighter sense of, of control on that item, whereas items lost in uh, transit centers, they're just a little bit more difficult um, to track, but lost and found is still very much going on. Yeah. So if, if just a quick question on that. So let's say the scenario happened again, where I found a phone at the Vista transit center yeah. and I go to the little key, the customer service area. And I say, Hey, I found this phone. Would they take that phone now or still no? Um, they would, they probably want a bit more information from you. Where'd you find it? What specific time? What was around? Just because um, we would build a case and try and actually identify someone with it versus just taking it and hanging on to it. Um, and yeah, so the short answer is they would. It It's just, just not involved. ideal. Yeah. It's, I just held on to it because they told me no. And then they called, the person called and then we figured it out. So great. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so lucky uh, for them. You know? Lucky for them. Um, yep. Those awesome. who typically lose it on a mode. The other thing is what's nice is they will drop the where's my phone and they can locate. Phones are a little bit more um, easier to track. Um, soft items, perishable items perishable items tend that aren't lost on a mode we tend to shy away from so. yeah that makes sense yeah <laughs> okay um let's see here a uh, quick question about the mystery writer um program that we have i i think that's great but um i'm curious are these mystery writers only uh like a person that's like walking onto the mode or do we have individuals who are maybe with a bicycle or in a wheelchair? Yes. Um, some of them are, um, we do try and keep who they are anonymous. Mm -hmm. Um, it is, um, it's not a requirement. It's a suggestion. Uh, I know for certain one of them does use, uh, some form of a mobility device. It's not a wheelchair. Um, and, uh, there is another one that tends to use a bicycle on particular on coaster. Um, but it's not, we, we don't always have the same mystery riders every quarter. So, um, sometimes they're there, sometimes they're not, um, but it's not a, it's not a requirement that they are in some sort of mobility device or have a bike load. Okay. But it's a great suggestion. So. Yeah, I'm just curious because some of these issues maybe that we have, um, you know, I one I just want to say across the board the mystery writer um, that data is really critical, yeah. but ensuring that people that have different experiences when they use public yeah. transit um, are represented in that mystery writer uh, population I think is really important too, uh, because then we can cross check with some of the customer complaints and see if. Uh, they're tracking similarly. Mm -hmm. So um, awesome. Okay. And thank you for asking that question about safety versus security. I had that on here too. Um, I also want to second uh, uh, 
board member Hinsey's suggestion about um, employee writing program and lift. I don't know how that works in the back end, um, but I think that's important. Um, now, a lot of outside of the, I guess really just it's like on the breeze bus system, um, we're seeing a lot of operator related uh, complaints. Um, as we start moving towards uh, integrating uh, our bus operators direct as direct employees, I really hope that there's a way that we can address some of these operator related uh, issues. Um, I know I've seen, uh, you know, I've seen really incredible operators, and I have seen um, sometimes where I question some of the methods that the operator is using with the customers. So, um, I, you know, if we could reduce the amount of operator operator related complaints, I think it would significantly. I'm not saying that we could ever get it to zero, because um, it's also perception, right? Like you said, these are uh, going in as raw data without any verification. Um, but I think that we could do a lot better in reducing the operator related complaints, um, because I. You know, some of the stuff that I've seen is is just it's just not good customer service um, as a practice, uh, and I know it's really hard. I've been in customer service too, and it's it's very difficult um, to deal with the general public. Uh, but um, I think it would be really great for us to have some kind of comprehensive uh, training program to ensure that our operators are providing the most customer service, and if they're running into issues that doesn't allow them to uh, perform at a, a higher rate of um, positive customer experience, then knowing what that is too is important for us. Um, so that way we can see, you know, maybe it's not always the operator, maybe it's the customer as well, right? Mm -hmm. um, but without having a little bit more information about what some of the issues are, I don't know if there's like, if it comes in with like, oh, their attitude sucked or, yeah. you know, so kind of breaking down um, some of these bigger portions of um, complaints, I think is important. So, you know, I don't know if off the top of your head, if you have, you know. Uh, yeah, we, we have granular data. Like I said, um, what is presented in here are what we call core categories. So they're um, larger trends. But um, beneath that is are, are specific subcodes that roll up into a core category. So under operator um, related, we have a variety of you know um, of uh, complaints specific to behavior. Um, operator rude is one of them. Operator closed door on me is another. Um, um, policy dispute typically tends to roll up uh, into that. Uh, operator drove off before I was actually seated. So we've got a variety. Most of them are either operator driving dangerously or operator rude. Um, and like Chris mentioned, uh, what you guys are presented is um, all feedback. We obviously do do a an investigation on all feedback that's received. Um, there is a pretty significant number that come back not valid. Mm -hmm. where we've reviewed video footage and uh, what the complaint received did not actually happen the way that it was received. So um, we're, we're, we look at both of those numbers, but um, it's still always an opportunity to engage the bus operator and right. talk through and use it as a training or a coachable moment. Um, so, which is why we work off of just the perception and the raw data that we're getting from the customer. Um, and we're just, as Chris had mentioned, we're, we've started doing monthly meetings with the bus operator, uh, with the uh, bus operations group. And they've, they've, they've been really productive um, in hearing from MV what they're working on with their bus operators and their road supervisors in terms of um, engagement and coaching um, and, and also working new ways to celebrate the ones that are receiving complaints. Yeah, definitely. That's very important. Um, and it's all, it's all really good groundwork and foundational work for when they do come in that um, the expectation is there, but this is not going to go away. It's going to be part of um, our monthly routine. So um, 
Yeah, but uh, uh, operator, and also I will note um, specific to some categories like um, pass bys, operator driving dangerously. If if I'm seeing trends in those in the monthly meetings, I'll immediately send a flag to bus operations and say, you know, this particular operator or this particular route is seeing significant uptick, or I'm seeing a trend in this, um, and and bus operations will work. Um, with the group to figure out a solve. So there are things that when we go into the next meeting, I will expect to see some sort of decrease or um, correction to the data that we get each month. And one other note on that, we uh, have, uh, mentioned to the, the board previously, um, a contract you approved with our CRM vendor uh, earlier this year um, is actually allowing us to do an enhancement with this system. And so we're using um, artificial intelligence to uh, analyze the data that's being input by the customer service agents. And what's that allow is a lot will allow us to do it's training right now. So it's learning. <laughs> um, once it gets trained, it'll allow us to not only to, to have a, a couple things. One, um, to make sure things are getting coded properly. So it'll flag like certain words or certain series of words to make sure that uh, when the concern got entered, it got coded properly so that we're, we're we, we have some data integrity. Uh, and then it'll also help us identify some of the trends that maybe we're not seeing in the top lines or in the subcodes. Um, so um, we hope that'll help us really dial this in even more than we have now. Awesome. Okay. Well, I, I appreciate all that feedback and um, different strategies to improve our overall customer service. Um, the last thing I wanted to ask because I didn't see it represented in the data is, you know, what percentage of these complaints were done in Spanish? I could, I would have to pull that because um, many of them do come in, um, uh, but I don't have that data reflective. I would have to manually scrub that five and five. Um, so I don't have a total number for you, but. We do receive quite a bit on the web in Spanish, um, and we do receive quite a bit on the phone in Spanish. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And just as a follow up to that, um, our, you know, I'm just curious ab about the data point because I've brought up the fact that I, I think, you know, especially in customer service, that folks that are um, speaking Spanish uh, and, you know, handling these complaints that are in Spanish. Um, I'm just, I'm wanting to make sure that they're valued for that additional skill. Um, so I just wanted to see, you know, what percentage of the complaints are Spanish versus how many employees we have that are able to handle those complaints, um, because I think that's a important um, nexus um, to ensure that we are uh, valuing our customer service folks um, that have that additional skill. They do. Yeah. So, more than half our staff. That's good. And, and they're strategically placed to during front counter at first of the month, we ensure that we always have Spanish speaking, opening and closing the front counter windows at each transit center to sell fare, primarily interested in Escondido because that's where the bulk of our Spanish speaking customers. Very good. Yeah. And, and hopefully, you know, there's something that we can do as an incentive, even if it's small, um to show that we we actually really do value that um and so we'll, we'll pull those two data points right okay yeah. before you get those back too. awesome that would be great uh i don't have any additional questions um but i really appreciate the the presentation um it, any other questions or comments from the board just a quick comment that i am going to have to leave at three um, and so I'm going to do the best I can to stay as long as possible, but I had one question related to the next item. So I might need to interrupt at some point during the presentation to ask it if that's all right with it. Please do. Yeah. Okay, all you. right. Well, thank you so much. And um, this is a no vote item. It's informational only. So the last uh, next and last item on our agenda is a presentation of the FY 2023 marketing and communications program results to date and an overview of the FY 2024 marketing and communication strategy. Chris Orlando, Chief Planning and Communications Officer, will introduce this item. Chris, you have the floor. Sorry, it's the, you give me all day. So, <laughs> okay. Um, so this is an overview uh, of the marketing communications plan for FY23. Um, we'll also preview some of the activities in FY24. Um, the board uh, in its September 
uh, board meeting uh, re will receive the comprehensive year-end marketing report. So that's a part of your quarterly reports that you'll receive in September. So this is an early look at some of the some of the data you'll see uh, in some of the examples you'll see about the marketing communications plan um, later in the year. Um, so this is, I'll go fast to try and get through as much as this as we can for board member Hinsey. Um, this is everything that the marketing communications team does. Um, I, I shorthand this to say when you see something, hear something, read something about the district externally or internally, generally in some way, shape or form, it goes through the marketing communications team. Uh, so pretty active team. They do everything from um, our advertising to crisis communications to a to, uh, uh, range of activities. So um, next slide, please. Um, uh, the strategy of the team has really been um, to really focus on people in places in, in North County and, and to, to try and, and more personalize. You, you will have noticed over the last uh, year or so, just sort of a softening of our external communications, um, more pictures of people, more pictures of you know what we see and interact with in North County. We even, I don't know if you noticed, but we even changed the photos in your board uh, Closed session room to be uh, photos of uh, of places in North County and not just pictures of the modes. So uh, we're trying to really sort of bring this home to the to the area in which in which we uh, in which we operate. Um, <clears throat> the team plays a real critical role in a lot of the customer experience things that um, we talked about in the previous presentation, uh, and a lot of the um, efforts we're undertaking to really enhance that customer experience because this is is often the lens and through which that customer experience is is seen. So um, uh, that's been a big focus, uh, as well as, as as the board knows, um, the commuter travel is still a bit constrained to what it had been prior to COVID. So there's been a real a real um, target and focus on uh, attracting and communicating with leisure riders, because that's been a real bright spot for us over the last uh, last 12 months. And so we've really, you know, focused on that and tried to um, uh, tried to uh, get as much ridership out of that uh, segment as we can, uh, and then and then really trying to do a data driven approach. So you'll see some data points with it throughout the presentation that is just a sample of how we how we measure the effectiveness of the of the campaigns and, and efforts that the marketing team does. Next slide, please. Um, we do uh, a variety of uh, special events throughout the year. These are some of the bigger ones. So uh, as you all know, the Holiday Express is a huge event for us each. Uh, each December, um, the Stuff the Bus campaign, uh, another big campaign for us. And uh, we just uh, completed, uh, they changed the name this year to Bike Anywhere Day, uh, was last month, I believe, or the month before. Um, so really big efforts. Sometimes we do these efforts on our own, like Holiday Express. Um, the Stuff the Bus is a collaboration with MTS. Uh, and then the Bus uh, Bike Anywhere Day is a collaboration region-wide. Sandag um, leads that effort and, and we all participate. Next slide. Um, we did a new effort this year, uh, uh, it was a, a promotional day that we um, did for the first time, Transit Equity Day, it, it aligns with um, Rosa Parks' birthday in February, it was a free fare day for the district, um, this was something that um, we did on our own as a way to um, uh, recognize Transit Equity, uh, and it was, uh, it was heavily promoted, you can see a sample of some of the um, some of the advertisements we did, the screen uh, there, the main screen on the on the right is the was the screensaver on the TVMs uh, uh, that day, uh, the days ahead. And on the left, you see a couple of the um, uh, social media posts that we did to promote this. Um, and it was a really, next slide, please. It was a really successful day. You can see in orange, just the spike of the ridership we got um, uh, uh, really uh, turned out to be a great, a great, effort for us, not only to promote transit equity, but but a good ridership driver for us. So it was a real good promotion that happened throughout the year or on that particular day. Um, the team also helps when we um, launch new products and services. So as, as the board knows, we launched uh, the new five and 10 packs um, uh, earlier this year. Uh, we're in just uh, finished the fourth month. We don't have data yet on June, but just finished the fourth month of, of that new product uh, and so far is, is doing quite well. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, these are just some of the things that the team puts together to support a product like that. So uh, everything from the train operator and bus operator uh, instructions, so so they're aware of what the product is, um, to the promotion materials you see in the middle there, some of the um, website um, uh, efforts that uh, to support this product launch, uh, and then the rider alerts. These would be um, printed on the mode, so a variety of activities. Um, this one also includes. It's in the next slide. Uh, included a digital campaign. So this is the digital ad. Hopefully it plays. 
This is a digital lab that uh, supported the five and 10 pack. So these were um, uh, targeted uh, digital ads online that we did. So our digital advertising allows us to be pretty targeted with, with who, we, we, um, who we reach with those. So that was a sample of what the campaign was to support it. Um, Padres is a huge focus for us. Um, so uh, last year, the Padres sold out 26 games. Um, they've already blown past that record this year. So uh, really uh, important for ridership, particularly on the coaster. Um, they're expecting 40 plus sellouts um, this year, and they're well on the way to, to achieve that. Um, we've added uh, 68 extra trains uh, to support the Padres through, through throughout the season. And so um, we've been heavily promoted. We were doing uh, not only uh, a pretty active social media campaign to support that, but we actually are doing uh, some paid advertising. We have some radio ads that we do on the radio broadcast for Padres. Uh, and um, we get a quantity of our um, bus uh, side advertising that's for the district. And so we've dedicated some of that to supporting this. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, and you can see um, this is results so far. So this is the bump we get on a game day versus a non-game day. Um, so when you look at the coaster ridership, um, uh, when there's a Padre game, um, we get weekdays, we get about a 35% bump in ridership. Saturday is about a 19% and then Sunday is about a, about a 45%. So it's pretty meaningful. You think about when there's uh, uh, the 68 extra games or extra service uh, throughout the season, it's a pretty important source of ridership for the coaster for us. And we, we promote it heavily. Um, we are in the midst of the Fair Tripper um, right now, which is our um, co uh, branded effort with the San Diego County Fair. And um, we were very pleased this year to include MTS in that. Um, uh, again, um, a couple of years past, they have not participated. Um, it's doing quite well this year. Happy to report that as of uh, earlier this week, we'd already surpassed sales from last week, uh, from last year. And um, that was before this weekend, which is the biggest weekend of the fair. So we're expecting to have a really strong performance out of the fair tripper um, this year. Um, we will uh, do uh, again this year. We didn't last few years have an, a similar agreement with the Del Mar races, but um, we've reengaged this year with Del Mar Racetrack, and we'll be doing uh, a similar program for the Del Mar Racetrack starting when the race season starts later in July. Next slide, please. Um, we're very active on social media. Here are just a few uh, examples of some of the social media posts that uh, we do. I won't dwell too much on this. Next slide. Uh, this is just a snapshot of some of our social media presence and, and some of the um, uh, communities that we have in each of the modes. Um, we communicate regularly on each of these modes, um, both in terms of general marketing messages, but in the case of Twitter, you know, we also do service alerts uh, on a, on a um, uh, Twitter channel. Um, this represents our marketing channel. We have a separate channel, which is service alerts. Uh, that isn't, isn't captured here, um, but, but we have both. Next slide. Um, safety awareness has been a big focus. Um, September is safety awareness month. So um, that's sort of the peak of the effort, but we communicate about safety um, throughout, throughout the year. Uh, here you see some of the social media campaigns that we've done. Um, and uh, this spring, we actually launched a more aggressive campaign, particularly in the coastal corridor around safety. Uh, next slide, please. This slide uh, is actually the one that my question relates oh, to. Oh, okay, pausing. So um, this is this is a question that's coming from um, somebody who voiced a concern during public comment in our council meeting on Wednesday night. Mm -hmm. And she was concerned that the um, suicide prevention signage, she called it an advertisement. And she was like, I'm worried that people are going to have the idea mm -hmm. to um, to commit suicide when they see these signs. So I I was wondering if we have any data to show that maybe... I know we don't classify um, passenger or what are they called? Strikes, trespasser strikes um, for the reason, but have we seen a decrease in um, trespasser strikes since installing this suicide prevention signage? Don't know if we've tracked it that way. I can say a couple of things about that. One, um, the images you see here and the, the day and the content we use for suicide prevention, those are all part of national campaigns. And that's not something we create internally. We use industry standard best practice messaging for that. Um, and, I, and I don't have the data for you, but um, this messaging does reduce the um, incidence of, um, um, we can pull that data for you, but but um, I don't know that we've tracked it as granular to say, how did we do before and after we put up the signage, but 
um, um, but I know from I can get for you from the national standpoint what what the signage does and what you know measures of suicide prevention um, can do. Yeah, I would be curious to know just from the national standpoint in case it's somebody that attends meetings often. So okay. to be able to respond, respond to her, sure. that would be helpful. Yep. And then um, I will take off, but I want to say I purchased a 10 pack, Coaster 10 pack, and I'm excited to use it. And I've asked the Sandag group that I serve with to arrange our meetings so that I actually could take the coaster down there. <laughs> so Thank hopefully you. that happens. <laughs> and um, yeah, this is, I think our social media is wonderful. I learn a lot about what we do as an agency from our Instagram account. Great. And um, I think it's really well run. So thank you. thank you so much. Thank you, board member Hinzi. No. No. So Okay, thank you. Um, we will take a very brief recess at this time. All right, we are back from our brief recess. Please continue. Okay, um, so uh, next slide, please. Um, we actually did um, some added uh, safety awareness uh, this spring, and this included uh, a paid advertising campaign, particularly along the um, coastal corridor. Um, and uh, uh, our new tier, tier, tour, uh, tier four trains are fantastic because they are the cleanest technology available. Um, and they are the quietest technology available. But um, as this ad shows you, and one of the things we really want to reiterate with the folks in our coastal rail quarter is that they are much bigger, quieter, and faster than you think. Uh, and so um, we ran um, an a ad themed uh, with this message just to build awareness that um, that train 
uh, is coming faster and it's it's bigger and it's fa and quieter than you might think. And so this was this was a paid advertising campaign we did uh, as well as social. And you can see some of the places where we we put this. Uh, and the goal really was to just some, build some awareness that you know being near the tracks is inherently dangerous and for folks to be conscious of their their about whereabouts. So um, as I said, se September is uh, Safety Awareness Month, so we'll ramp this activity and and do do more of this type of work in September uh, as the peak of that effort, but it really does continue all year long. Next slide, please. Um, we do paid advertising. This one's a little hard to read and it is a bit in the weeds, so I apologize, but um, uh, this is sort of a summary of the paid advertising that we do. Um, and you see um, uh, what in the advertising industry is called impressions, which just uh, generally means how many you know times that particular uh, advertising is seen or heard or, or you know, um, by individuals. And then um, just some of the um, different things we've done throughout the year and, and just, just sort of the reach it has. So just to give you a sense of, of the level of activity. Uh, and this is another, just another example of one of the uh, digital ads on the next slide that, uh, that we had. Um, where to has been a theme for us um, uh, for the year. Again, trying to highlight the people in this place in North County. This particular one supported Youth Opportunity Pass and just, just for, for youth riding. Um, next slide. Um, another program that the team manages is our um, advertising sales. So this would be sales of, um, of others advertising on our mode. So when you see the, the ads on the side or back of the bus, the buses or or on the coast the coaster wraps um this is is what that represents and so the um uh uh the green bars are the um total gross revenue that we generate through those sales um our share of that revenue is is the blue bar um, based on our contract with our provider uh, but the yellow line is what's called our minimum uh, annual guarantee and so we are guaranteed that amount uh, each year um uh, each year of the advertising sales. So whether or not we, we hit that amount in sales, we, we get, we receive that revenue, uh, in that, um, that number goes up each year, um, it, it grows each year. Um, so, uh, when you see the blue bar, uh, on top of the yellow, yellow line, uh, those are months in which, uh, we've exceeded that amount. And, and, um, and so we're, uh, overachieving within, within the, the um, the contract, um, La in 20, um, 2021, uh, on an annual basis, we were under the minimum annual guarantee, which means that um, we received more in revenue than we actually generated you know, our, in our share, um, primarily because of COVID. Um, that rebounded last year um, and we, we outperformed the minimum amount. Uh, and then this year, the final numbers are in, these are, this is partial June, uh, but we will exceed last year's in terms of the advertising sale. And that a guarantee grows each year. So um, so the advertising sales are, are a good source of revenue and growing for, for the district. So uh, next slide, Quick please. Quick question on that. Yeah. Um, as we increase frequency, does that increase our baseline for revenue? Is there any correlation between those two? It's not correlated in that way. It's it's just, it bumps up by a percentage each year. Okay. Each of the contract year. Thank you. Uh, and then this shows you just sort of the, the year over year that I was just talking with about how we've, how we've done. Um, year over year. Um, for the coming year, um, you've seen this slide before. This is this was the output of of our Deloitte study and the recommendations that came out of that market analysis project. And so these are really will be the themes that we highlight in the coming year of uh, around our marketing. Um, not any not everything in these five um, areas are necessarily marketing initiatives, um, but these are the areas that our messaging and our, our campaigns will focus on and. and um, uh, you know, will become part of what we what we talk about in, in our marketing in the coming year. Next slide. Uh, and then just to give you a sense of when all these things fall. So um, uh, this is the first half of the year and you can see sort of some of the major promotions uh, in each part uh, of the year. Um, it's a very busy summer months. You know, we have Padres, Del Mar Fair, Comic-Con, Pony Express, which is the, um, uh, the races. Uh, and then, um, you know, we start roll right into back to school. So we'll start promoting back to school, uh, rail safety, as I mentioned. Um, and then you see some of the fall campaigns. Next slide. 
And then as we get into next year, um, this is some of the, the efforts that are planned. And with that, I'll take additional questions. Try to get that through that quickly. Hopefully that's okay. <laughs> Thanks. Um, and Suhil, do we have any public comments for this agenda item? No, Madam Chair. All right, so at this time we are ending public registration to speak on this item. Are there any questions from the committee members? What's the Pony Express promo? Oh, that's the um, that's our promotion with the Del Mar races. Oh, got it. Okay. Yeah. Thank so you. it's uh, it's very similar to what we do with the Fair Tripper. So it's um, you buy a coaster pass and you get free entry to the races. Well, thank you so much for the presentation. Uh, there is no vote required for this item. It is informational only. And uh, let me tell you about the next scheduled meetings. Uh, so it's our regular board meeting, July 20th, 2023 at 2 p.m. And this meeting is adjourned. Thank you all. <laughs>